you mostly have probably heard Twitter's been absolutely on fire the last couple of days. It's been absolutely on fire. Um, I'm really kicking myself, man. I never used Twitter more so than I've used it in the last two years. And it mostly has come about because of the pandemic. If the pandemic never happened, I would have never used Twitter, I swear, in my life because I was always on Instagram. But for some reason, the pandemic came around, I guess because Instagram's kind of showy, and I'm trying to like psychoanalyze myself, maybe because Instagram is a lot more showy. And at the time during the pandemic, like, like the rest of us, I was going through a bad time. I wasn't really feeling the greatest. I didn't really want to see people having fun because I wasn't feeling like I was having fun or I was enjoying myself or I was, I was happy in any way, shape or form. So you can kind of maybe get the best parts of social without seeing everybody flossing and stunting by using flipping twitter so i just basically jumped on it at the beginning of the pandemic so i've only been using it heavily really for the last two years and a half the other times i was using it was ma mainly here and there to grab some videos or it might have been to kind of share something like i basically use it as another place to share links of stuff that i was doing like if i had the podcast out i'd share it on their new blog share it on their mix share it on their whatever but i never used it to kind of you know really consume content over the last couple of years it's been amazing and this past weekend has been awesome because for some reason elon musk woke up and just you know chose violence or chose to fucking press people's annoying buttons because he woke up and decided to just change shit fundamentally about twitter which was quite interesting approach which i never really even thought about myself so what did he do he basically implemented a read limit so he basically said for um for people that are unverified you could read up to a certain amount of tweets i think initially it was like 600 and if you're verified you could do 6000 and then over the course of the weekend he changed the you know the limits but that was the basic premise of it and obviously most people on twitter who just you know love the app but don't want to pay for any kind of additional service were absolutely in, in you know enraged people were writing absolute essays about why it's a bad idea they were adding elon he's his, his mentions must have been crazy it was just a real wild time because you know we were all basically figuring out in real time like right is elon just gonna do what he wants with this app that he bought and i think everyone quietly realized yeah he paid for it so essentially he can if he wants to take a big dump on it and just you know let it go to fire if he wants to because you know it's his thing he can do what he wants and I think it was just funny for me to realize that that was even an option. I don't think, cause I've worked a lot in, you know, in start, in the startup industry or whatever sector market, whatever you call it. I've worked for some, I've worked at a couple of places that you could deem them to be social media platforms. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about monetizing the feed in that way right in terms of oh how much you can actually scroll that's actually quite wild because i remember when i first started using tiktok for the first few times it made me appreciate even though instagram pushes the sponsored content way too hard and your feed usually is made up sometimes even to this day your feed will be made up like maybe 60 percent of stuff that you don't even follow it'll be pages you don't follow but recommended to you accounts you don't follow but recommended to you plus people's paid promotion like you know like those absolute idiots and ignoramuses who pay for fucking promo for their fit pics and stuff right that stuff is all getting pushed to you so you're not really even seeing your friend stuff and it's not obviously coming up in any sort of um you know there's no order of it anyway just whatever so i remember when i first started using tiktok one of the funny things about it was that on their feed if it's a sponsored or it's an ad or whatever when you're scrolling it will just like stop on it it was just like you can't move so if an ad comes up for, I don't know, Kit Kat or some shit, it won't move until the ad goes after 15 seconds or however long it stays. So it made me appreciate that even though Instagram pushes all the sponsored content to you, they still let you browse. So if you want to, you can just keep skipping, skipping, skipping. It's hard to tell which is which, which is organic, which is paid sometimes on Insta, but at least you can skip it on TikTok. You can't, you just have to stay on that thing until it passes, then you can continue. So, um, you know, Elon going as far as saying, hey, you can read, but you can only read up to a certain amount of sound is insane. And also I was wondering, how do they even calculate what the reads are? Like sometimes people will retweet things and it will come from like three different accounts. Maybe the video is from one account, then one tweet that's viral from one account, then another tweet that you're seeing is from another account. So does that count as three reads? Um, if you click on it, does that count as one? Or if you view it on your homepage, that's one or two, I don't know, whatever. It was just really confusing. But obviously everybody was fucking hitting their limits over the weekend. <laughs> and we were all getting this message, which I got a couple of times, which is like rate limit exceeded or something, which you've never really seen. And it got so bad to the point where I think Elon's like pushing it 
so it was like a notification like a button thing so it'd say rate limit put exceeded to to see more tweets subscribe so it was clearly a, a kind of a test or something to see if you could push really hard the subscription thing because i'm guessing for elon temporarily for now with twitter maybe that's the only thing he can not legitimately see is going to make them money and you know i i was i'm surprised it's not as been as successful as i thought it would be because i thought people were more obsessed with blue ticks than maybe i envisioned but maybe people were obsessed with blue ticks when they thought the blue tick thing was something given to you bestowed upon you once you reach a certain level of fame once it became something you could just purchase maybe it changed the whole nature of it and the desirability of it went which i still don't think is the case because i still got a feeling when instagram rolls out the verification program to everybody which i'll definitely use this because especially if it allows you to send links on your instagram stories and stuff like other people do but that have more than ten thousand followers and stuff I have a feeling when Instagram rolls out that verification program where you can pay for a blue tick on there, it's going to go dumb. So I think verifications probably only apply on certain platforms. For the most part, Twitter, you don't really need to be verified to pop off on there. Some of the biggest figures, cultural commentators, comedians, and just, you know, meme accounts don't have verification. Maybe they do because they want these features, but before that, you don't get famous off of that. You get famous for just like, you know, talking your shit, catching a lick and jumping on the algo wave, or maybe becoming part of the algo wave, whatever it may be called, right? Or maybe being the algo wave yourself. So it's not really a, a, a verification and things so maybe that's where he's at but you can see from the headlines here on google just how flipping crazy it's been over the last few days everyone going absolutely nuts about it you got headline here from financial times musk ignites backlash would move to limit number of tweet posts users can view elon musk puts a reading paywall on twitter close to the verge bbc says twitter temporarily restricts twitter's users um users can see elon musk announce like crazy and everyone's kind of putting their boot in and reporting just generally on what's going on and i'm pleased to announce actually as of a few hours ago my tweet actually wasn't working i wasn't able to tweet a lot of things um and then of course i think the next few posts i saw was basically elon you know insinuating that part of the reason why he did it was because he wanted to encourage people to go outside and touch grass because i think he reported a few days before that that you know it was record number of usage in terms of twitter right everyone was on there more than ever before and maybe he was feeling somewhat conflicted about it and he felt some more people should be outdoors especially considering the record heat waves around parts of europe and maybe other parts of the world who knows but people didn't respond well to it people didn't take well to being told what they should be doing on social media or the internet and it really reminded me a lot of um the time where i was in you know starting up i guess in the startup industry startup scene working doing community management marketing type of vibe and i was moving around from company to company but what i remember at the time you know getting experience all these cool places was that part of the culture at that time was to have like bean bags, was to have drinks on Friday, pizza on Wednesdays, whatever it may be, right? And at the time that was seen as like a like that was seen as like a pro. That was seen as like something very attractive to potential employees, right? In your company that you got all these amazing things, you bring them in, you have let them have an interview, you show them your fucking, you know, your 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 kitchen, open plan, everyone hangs out, blah blah blah. But then I also remember there was a shift in that some people started to see that as toxic productivity, toxic employment or something along those lines where essentially the argument was you're designing an office in the way that people can't leave. So they kind of are always here. So they're basically always working and there's no real separation between work and play. Understandable. I get what they mean. A little bit R worded, but I get it. And then I also remember there was a time where there, you know, in offices, there'll be flipping cupboards full of snacks any snack you wanted from kinder bueno to cereal to whatever crisp all there then i remember there was a period where suddenly everyone went to become health conscious and you were getting these boxes of fruit delivered to the to the office from these fruit startup companies that had like different boxes you'd get every week or whatever there'd be maybe a particular swipe of health bar nutrition bar as kai bowls whatever there was a shift happening and i remember this particular company i worked at the all the, basically all the fat girls in our office revolted against it and i was also backing them because i really didn't understand this whole like forced push to make people eat healthily in the office um let people make their choices as they please they're all grown-ups and they rejected it 
all across the board. And I remember it actually being a thing for them, you know, for a lot of startups in London, basically having to wrangle with HR and whatever the community team to kind of work out a resolution because the people that were used to coming into the office and grabbing a quick, you know, chocolate, whatever it may be for their tea and stuff or a croissant or whatever, were now being told that that was out and you were going to eat flapjacks or you were going to eat rice krispies or rice cakes and shit like people were going nuts. They were not having it. So there's something about humans, especially adults, when you tell them what to do and you force them into doing something, they just naturally say, no, nah, I'm not doing it. They actually throw the toys out of the pram. So it's kind of what it felt like over the weekend. But it's all been rectified now. It is what it is. But again, you have to give, I have to give Elon some level of credit because for all the decisions he's made on Twitter, some of them have been really redacted and not the greatest. I think you got that guy like Pomp. What's his name? Is it Pompiliano? He's been on Twitter basically really capping for that guy super hard i forgot his name i think it's pomp or something like that right he's been capping let me see if i can find him actually he's been capping for um elon really hard on flipping twitter which has been quite cringe to see actually him going above and beyond to basically prove to elon that he's you know the number one fan and he gets everything and it's fine and he's a genius you know those basically Elon Musk apologists and stuff which you know resoundingly everyone's saying this whole you know paying people you know having a, a limit on how many tweets they can read a day is absolutely insane whatever it may be called but he went out of his way to try and defend him and some of the points he made were absolutely you know insane anyway but I just want to quickly pull it up and so I can quickly read what he had to say because I thought it was quite funny, especially again when you consider the you know the wide majority of people out there who use Twitter on a daily basis who have been heavy who are you know most people on Twitter are I think ninety percent of the people on there are flipping hardcore users even if they don't post they're always on looking at everything seeing everything at all moments of the day are all coming around saying, hey, this is a terrible thing. And he's the only one trying to basically fly the Elon flag because he wants to seem as if he is fucking, you know, he gets it. Um, let's think, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see who I can find it. Yeah, there it is. It's somewhere down here. Here we go. So, um, but weirdly enough, there was one person on social media who actually had a lot of good things to say about how Elon's been running Twitter and stuff. And I thought his overall post was very interesting because i think a lot of people out there will definitely disagree with a lot of his points but it's basically pomp right and when he's not out here you know scamming his fans with shitty coins or horrible crypto advice and stuff uh, he's out here basically being um elon musk is fucking white knight which is absolutely horrendous and cringe anyway and it, it comes from a lot of these american guys so i feel like american dudes have like no capacity for shame sometimes or like no pride or no dignity in some way shape or form I don't think you're going to get a lot of European men out here really going in public and really kind of, you know, sucking off another man in this way. Even if it's somebody as kind of quote unquote brilliant as Elon, you're still going to keep it somewhat, you know, together. You're going to act like, you know, you're going to act like this is normal, that you've seen someone like him before in your life. You know, you act like you've been here before in a slight way. You're not going to be sucking him off to the teeth like some of these guys do. Like, you know, they're just pumps and these, you know, Lex Friedman types. You don't really find these guys in Europe. You would think so. Everyone kind of a little bit more chill, a little bit more resilient reserved maybe has more personal pride maybe has way more of an ego who knows anyway and um, pomp's reaction to everything going on his his summary is as follows Elon Musk's recent decision around Twitter may appear confusing, but we're watching an impressive company turn around in real time, which I kind of have to agree with him in that regard. I think this whole cutting cost and still making, oh sorry, this whole cutting headcount and still making Twitter operational has definitely been a game changer. I think a lot of startups out there have basically opened their eyes to the idea that you don't always have to have an inflated workforce to get the job done. Um, if it gets a bit tricky in startup land because I've worked in startups a lot I know that part of the reason why a lot of companies hire a lot is basically to increase their options or their possibilities to get more funding because if you if you keep hiring it makes you look like you're somewhat of a profitable company so that when you go for another round of investment it looks like you're always on the up and the up there's like potential to grow blah 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 those are usually things or if you do get investment one of the stipulations could be to increase headcount anyway and to build out certain teams or certain divisions in your company and let that foster over time that could be an option but he definitely has proved that you don't need a lot of people to run sites or social media apps or whatever they may be called product services like twitter fair enough 
He's increased the content quality on For You tab, debatable. Expanded creative features like two hour videos. I think that's really good, but it's still been taking a bit too long to really expand and roll it out completely. Um, empowered users to make money with subscriptions, for sure. Um, but I don't know who actually is paying for this sort of stuff. I don't. Insert ad rev inventory in the reply sections for tweets, fair. Suggest more tweets for more users end of thread, fair. Increasing user count by forcing account creation. That's also a fair one. Um, because I think for the most part nowadays, I haven't checked it in a while, but last I've checked, when you check Twitter, you have to be logged in. You can't check it without logging in. Before you could check a couple of tweets here and there, then it'll prompt you to log in and you couldn't get away from the page. But now it's basically hard coded where you have to basically create an account. So that obviously is going to increase the amount of users they get. Um, gains new way of reconstruct, um, to reconstruct, sorry, users via new accounts. Diversifies revenue with Twitter blue features for, for sure. That's definitely something, but it definitely could be more to that. Drives new cycle by each point of the update. For sure. I agree. And engagement explodes as people complain each time. Yeah. But that's also not something to kind of herald. Like it's a weird thing to kind of brag about. People complain about what I do all the time. And that means I'm always on the news. I guess some people's business is the fact that they annoy people. That could be a thing, but that shouldn't be something that you should be, you know, putting your hat on. It continues here. Crit critics, sorry. Critics love to hate Elon, but the product decisions are masterful. They follow a similar playbook to what he did at Facebook years ago. Um, Sorry, to what we did at Facebook years ago, which is widely considered the best growth team in corporate history. It has become cool to doubt Twitter's future. The product velocity and growth tactics suggest Twitter, um, suggest the history books may tell a different story. Oh, could I? Look at you again. Critics love to hate Elon, but the product decisions are masterful. They follow a similar playbook to what we did at Facebook years ago, which was widely considered the best growth team in corporate history. It has become core to doubt eat Twitter's future. The product velocity and growth tactics suggest history books may tell a different story though. No, for sure. There's some point to it. I think in, in short, you know, Twitter's not, it's hard to fuck up really and truly. I think the previous regime did try their best too, but it was still decent to use, even with all the constraints they had. Nowadays, it's a bit more loosey-goosey and you can go a bit crazy on there. So it's a way more enjoyable experience, I think, overall. But Elon's also smart enough not to fuck it up completely. I don't think so. And because he's a power user himself, um, I think he will eventually get to the right point. It's going to, you know, we're going to hear a lot of road bumps. There's going to be a lot of points of annoyance like he did with his fucking, you know, how many tweets, you know, limit thing you can read. But overall, he'll eventually get there like he did with this because he reversed it, right? There was enough uproar, enough people kind of pissed off at the whole idea behind it that he eventually just kind of succumbed to it and just kind of turned around and decided, you know what? this isn't worth it and now we're kind of back to normal so you know it was funny to why it lasted but again it kind of proved how addicted everyone is to flipping social media i will say all of us i don't include myself because i do have periods of time where i don't use the apps at all and obviously i read a lot of books and stuff so naturally that gives me opportunity to kind of unplug but jesus man our dependency our codependency on these apps is absolutely awful which is why sometimes when i hear people say oh social media isn't real i don't get bothered by things people say all about me online it's like mm, you probably should though because you spend your all your time on there so if people are on the place that you spend all your time on are uh, saying bad things about you it would it should hurt you if it doesn't hurt you you might be on the spectrum or a complete psychopath really um because most people are going to be affected by those things especially on platforms that you frequent um but hey what do i know when it comes to this stuff not really that much